I don't know, I messed that up. Hey everybody, Kevin Yee here for you for One Piece Strong World movie review. Now, the picture, I'm, I'm going to do a movie review in front of my TV so I can have a screen set or I just pause the movie at the right time. I paused it, oops, I paused it on the scene where they bust into Siki's palace at the end and they were all in the nice suit and ties and everything. But the glare from the lamp and the big lamp I mean, the ceiling fan at top was really messing that up. And I was like, dang it, man. I got to find something good. I, I was going through the movie for about a good 30 minutes trying to find a good pause moment where I can have the whole crew and it won't be there. It's still glaring. You can't really see the amic. You can always tell Dex Luffy, gear second. You got the steam flowing everywhere. That's, just, that's pretty good enough. So I got my trusty notes. Now, Captain America was like two hours. only had like three pages. This movie's only one hour. I think this is the, for the last, what, four movies, three movies? This is the shortest. This one was only about, not 21 minutes. I was looking at the, uh, stuff. So this is only 115 minutes. This is way shorter than First Avenger, and I have way more pages than the last one. So let's see how long this one will last. So let's get into it. Uh, that means it's like five or six pages. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yo, I, I did nine pages. Dang. Okay. Oh, yeah, and the quality. I, when I talk, it doesn't max up with my voice until like halfway through it. And that's on the best quality. I put it on the standard quality because it's usually on high. Maybe it's on standard. It'd be a bit better. You, I am a bit dark in a bit. Let me try to fix that. I am still a little bit dark in, but it's whatever. So, as you can, so at the beginning of the movie, we see Golden Lion Siki, and he's attacking Marine Ford. And Garp and, Sego, Garp and Sengoku fight him. And we find out that he destroyed half of Marine Ford, just like Whitebeard. And Golden Light and Siki, he is confirmed as a canon character. He's in the canon of the story because Garp, we heard it in the manga and he says it in the movie that he was the very first person to escape impaled down. And the way he did that was, I guess, only his legs were shackled because they said he cut off his own legs and he got out of there. And in the movie, his legs are swords. But I was like, so the only part of his body that they shackled were his legs. Because he can't cut off his own legs if his arms are shackled too. Because you know, when we saw Ace and Jimbe, their arms and their legs were shackled. I guess they learned from their mistakes. I guess the only thing was shackled was his legs. And he was just like cut and he got out of there. They sort of probably cuffed his arms too, but hey, whatever. And I put right here, yeah, his ship is just one giant piece of rock with oars on it. Like the oars move every time you see it. I'm like, do you really need the oars? Because anything that uh, Siki gets to touch. I mean, anything that Siki touches, he can show how it moves because when the straw hat sit was falling and Luffy went to go punch him, he all he did was this, and then the sit was moving. So he can make anything move how he wants it when it floats. So I was like, I guess you don't really need those. <clears throat> Sorry, I guess you don't really need those oars. I guess it's aesthetic. His Jolly Rouse is a giant skull with his beard with the peel wheel, the the pinwheel. Now, I mean, like the you know uh, the pinwheel, the sip, the the wheel. You know the sip wheel. It's like uh, like cut part of that off and put it on his head. That's what he had, like little pegs. He's bald on the head, and it's just the pegs on his head. It's just kind of weird. You know what? Okay, I was like, you can't really see me. I'm like really on the edge of the camera, and he has in his uh, figurehead. It's a giant golden lion. I don't know where he found that. But that is a really nice looking lion. I want to have that. Anyway, we get to the beginning of the movie. And it's Luffy. He's running around the jungle. Well, he's on one of the islands and he's running around the jungle. And he's trying to find everybody. And he's being chased by this flat alligator. It's basically just a regular alligator that's like flat. Like like somebody that like like Hope just stomped on it. And the alligator is flat. His tail is curled up. And he is just gunning for Luffy. Now, out of nowhere, an octopus comes out of nowhere, and octopus has a scar. And I, I put land octo. It's a, it's a land octopus that can survive on the land. It grabs the gator, and it just starts punching it like random, and it flies off. And then now it's the octopus that's chasing him. And then Luffy, he's running through the jungle, and he gets out of the jungle. 
and it's like this Aztec ruin sort of place he runs into. And when he gets there, it's like this giant praying mantis that tries to cut him, but obviously Luffy dodges. He cuts two of the octopus's arm off, and then it just, sort of just kicks the octopus through some buildings. I didn't think it was actually that strong when I, you know, I was like, what in the world? He just kicks it through some buildings. And then, oh, well, it was, yeah, it was a long, yeah, a long arm bear. A long arm bear comes out of nowhere and bear hugs the, not a bear, but it grabs the, because you know a praying mantis, this praying mantis is a giant and his little talons on his arm can slice through almost anything. So the bear grabs him and holds him. So he's like this, so he can't move his arms. And just, I remember, oh yeah, he like headbutted him or he, no, he, he threw him through some rock and then it came back at him. And then the thing came back and then he bear hooked it again. Sumo flexed him and buried his head in the rock and it was done. The thing was done. Then Luffy goes through to a gum gum pistol, misses the bear strong. Luffy's like, okay, I got some miles to do it. He goes to get a third, one hit, bear is done. He turns tiny. Then he looked at the octopus. He was like, hmm, I wonder if I can cook this. Then boom, it cuts. And this group is Robin, Frankie, and Brooke. I really like this trio. That, that was a really good trio. Only thing that happens here is they're walking along some rock and there's water on both sides. And a bunch of ants come out of nowhere and they pass Brooke and they head straight for Frankie and Robin. Uh oh. <laughs> but we find out these ants, they're like a whole army of ants. These ants can eat about anything. Because this giant shark was in the water and it jumps and it goes to attack Prona. I was going to say Prona. It goes to attack Robin and Frankie. And then the ants jump up and eat the whole shark in like three seconds. And it's like, it's not just one little shark. Like this shark is like from here to like here. Like it's a long, big shark. And it eats it and it's still hungry. And Frankie was like, huh? Well, I understand why it just passed by Brooke. And Brooke is like, what? Oh, what happened? They were like, he was like, they're hungry. They want meat. They don't. Well, you can actually see it kind of better now. Kind of. Well, let's just keep it glowy. Let's just keep it glowy. For a few more minutes. Um, he was like, they're hungry. They want meat. You know, Brick was like, oh, you don't want meat because I'm just bones? I got you. All the ants run toward. Uh, you know, he, they're running towards Frankie and Robin, but Brooke gets in front of him, goes right past them, and you don't see anything happening. All you see is the wind, like a wind uh, sort of like dash, and you see the water move. And then right before they get next to Brooke, I mean, right before they get next to Robin and Frankie, Robin and Frankie, they knew what happened. They're just like, oh, okay. Frankie put his uh, skin back on because he had like that one back in the day, you know, pre time skip, he had that one arm was fake. So he had like fake skin for it, and when he really wanted to punch you, he took it off and he had like a middle hand. He put it back on, Robin and Frankie. Oh, I need to get this computer fixed. It's real broken right here. My bad, everybody. I didn't mean for that to happen. I really need to get this computer fixed. Anyway, they're like, oh, okay. Man. So they start walking and Rook does the uh humming it's like the hummingbird slash and all he does is clink back into the cane all the ants are done he killed every single last tiny ant with one attack that is impressive for brother and he's able to do that because he's bone he's so swift that's really impressive like do really downplay brook but his swordsman stick well it's not swordsman skills he does mostly fencing he does really fencing more than swordsman sip but it's basically sort of mistake, you get what I'm saying? But, you know, his skills are really good. It's just that he's not – like, if he, was, if he was as strong as Zoro and he had those skills, he would be really deadly. He would be really deadly. Uh, Yeah, they're gone. Oh, yeah, the next time we see Luffy, because, uh, like, after that, we see where everybody is at, and the groups are Luffy, the groups are Luffy by himself. The second group is Robin, Frankie, and Brooke. Those are a group on a different island. The other group is Chopper and Zoro. And then the last group is Sanji and Usopp. And then after that, after, like, after we get the whole Frankie, Brooke, and Robin scene, it, the camera zooms out and it zooms back into each straw hat. So that bounty, what that name are, and wherever they're at, we see like each group. 
Then we get a scene of Nami. You see swimming in the swimming pool. She's not saying anything. It's just a nice, beautiful animated scene of her just doing a full lap down, a full lap back. She goes on her back. She floats. She's just thinking to herself. And then, no, no, yeah, she's just thinking. And then she gets out of the pool and she starts to dry off. And then the scientist dude, the gorilla, and Siki come in there dancing for, like, no reason. Because, like, she's thinking as she comes in, the music starts coming. The music starts bumping up. And they're like, do-do-do. And they're like, yeah, they're like, okay. Uh, okay, bring it bring it back. And the gorilla's like, okay. Oh. Oh, the, the clown dude's like, okay. All right, Siki. Oh. 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 Float, float. Oh. They're, like, they're just dancing. And they're like, huh. And the little quirks of them are Siki keeps, either this is old age, he's not that old, I, I, I don't know what's going on with him, but he keeps thinking stuff is different things. Like every time he looks at the gorilla, he keeps saying it's his grandma or it's a giant. Or when he looks at the cloud, he's like, it's a giant afro. And then the clown dude would slap him. Then every now and then the clown dude would do hand signals for some reason. Like the clown dude would come in and go, <coughs> And they're like, yo, what are you saying? Like, you know, speak. And they can actually speak. And his shoes do a toot noise. Like, every time he takes a step, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> That's his quirk. And then the gorilla, he's just a gorilla. He's just a gorilla. They do sort of make him bigger and small. Because he's like maybe a few feet taller than Siki in some scene. And he stands right beside him. And like at the end when Sanji fights him, he's like gigantic. And he doesn't like, you know, start spazzing and then he just grows. He just gets that big uh, out of nowhere, really. <laughs> he just gets that big out of nowhere. I don't really know why. I don't really. I don't really know why that happens, but it's whatever. Anyway, yeah, they just start dancing and Siggy keeps trying to make Nani join his crew. Obviously, she keeps saying no. And I put a note right here and I was, it was this, this line was the first time I watched it. I watched this only about four or five times. This went about six times last night when I watched it. This always makes me laugh. I don't know why. Like he go, this man, Golden Lion Siki. I used to say this all the time. He, this is the weirdest pickup. Isn't that a pickup line? He was trying to call it right here. He said, "You are so cool. You make ice insecure, baby dog. <laughs> You're so cool. You make ice insecure, baby dog. <laughs> oh my gosh." That is so ridiculous. And it's so corny. It's like, what? You make, you're so cool. You make ice and six, right? That, that, that was so dumb. <laughs> I, it's so funny, though. And, the, and he calls Nami Baby Doll all the time throughout this whole movie. Baby Doll. Baby Doll. Baby Doll. Like the whole movie, he says Baby Dolls. It doesn't get annoying. It's just like that's his little nickname for Nami. All right, on to the second page. Oh, yeah, we get a flashback. Wait, this is before I have to like the Billy Bird. Okay, no, never mind. Okay, so after they stop dancing and they talk, we get a flashback. And in this flashback, uh, Nami is giving a, 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 a sorry, Nami is reading a newspaper and she's telling everybody that. There's been a bunch of attacks in the East Blue from these giant monsters, and they just the giant animal monsters, and they just destroy anywhere they've been. Now they see notes that all the places that we're from haven't been attacked yet, but this is happening more frequently in the East Blue. Everybody's worried. And then I put like this little note. There was a scene of Brooke smoking. Now Brooke has never smoked in the canon of the manga or the anime. This is like one random scene where while everybody's talking, Brooke smokes, and then the smoke comes out of his mouth and his eyes and yeah he just smokes like that was a really weird scene to see Brooke smoking I guess he could since he can't get lung cancer because he's just bones and you know it's anime I don't think anybody can get lung cancer and it wouldn't harm him and it just comes right out his neck or his eyes and mouth he's, he's just bones so I guess it's whatever with him you know it can't really affect him too much um she getting, she's getting everybody up to speed about what's happening everybody worried and they're talking. Now, I don't know where CP Sip goes. Oh, 
What's going on? This is really hot, I guess. But I can't stop now. I'm 15 minutes in. All right, let's let's just hope that doesn't happen again. Let's let's. Just, I'm so sorry, man. I wanted this review to be really good. I'm so sorry. This keeps happening. This, I could get the fan on, but then the fan make too much noise. She's getting everybody up to speed. And a Siki sips them out of nowhere. And it's not attacking the straw hats. It's just really just bypassing them. And they notice that, you know, this is a giant rock or whatever. What in the world? It's just floating. And then Nami feels the wind. She's like, hold up. There's a cyclone coming. We have to turn like 90 degrees to the left and do whatever. And Luffy was like, okay, but let's go tell them first. Luffy yelling. One of the dudes on Siki should notice and like, hmm, hey, sir, they're trying to tell us something. And Siki throws down a tone dial. Well, yeah, he throws down a tone dial. And then there was like this little funny scene where um they were like, oh, so he's no, they were like when they catch it, because he uses the flow flow for to make it go down slowly. They catch it, and I'm mean, just the message, and Sanji was like, Well, it looks like we're not the only ones that have been to Skype here. And Zara was like, Yeah, it wouldn't be too hard. He has a flying ship, you know, like <laughs> like that dialogue between them was pretty funny. And I mean that funny, I, I guess I, I get a little chuckle. Anyway, they give the thing back. All they do, I guess they just throw it in the air and it just floats right back to Siki. Because when Siki threw it, he just floated right back down. He hears it. There's a cyclone. Siki has like four to five different navigators with big thermometers and all this science equipment. And they're like, uh, ain't nothing here, sir. Ain't nothing. Boom, cyclone comes in. They're like, oh, shoot, we got to go. We had to turn 90 degrees. He pulls the straw hacks out of it. There was a scene where right after that, he kills one of the navigators because he made a wrong forecast. And he's mad because I have like four to five of the best navigators in the world. And they all get put the same because this one girl can tell when a storm coming and you guys can't with all this equipment you guys got and from all your like, you know, PDAs and stuff. Come on now. And he shoots to kill one of the dudes. And when the cyclone was coming in right before they turned the ship, this, uh, there was like, there was a couple of dudes outside of the ship just on the dock, I guess. And right before, like there was like two giant doors and they try to run in. Some dudes do get in and Siki just closes it. And they're like, yo, Siki, you can't leave us out here. What are you doing? And the cyclone just blows them away. He just he killed some of his crewmates. Wow. Boom, right after that, Siki comes down to thank them. And he demonstrates his float fruit. Um uh the character of Siki, he is canon in the manga, like I said. He is canon in the manga, like I said, but I don't know if it's canon. For him to have the float float power. I mean, we haven't seen it in a manga yet, so I guess if he ever does show up in the canon of the story, hey, I mean, I guess he could still have the float float. I want to have a problem with that. He said anything he touches, it will keep floating until he decides it just don't want to float anymore. So he'll he'll touch the computer, it start to float. He look at it, he was like, yeah, I don't want that to float float no more. It will eventually fall. Either it's gonna fall fast or slow, however he wants it. He can change the direction of it. Any way he sees fit, it includes water because all the floating islands that his base, he touches like a big chunk of land, it floats and that includes the water. Or maybe he touched the water and then it floats up with it. Who knows? I was thinking that's kind of weird since the devil fruit users, but I guess if he just touches the land and then the water floats up with it, that's a good counter to what's going on. And there was a tiny scene where, uh, oh yeah, he can't make people, he can make himself float. But that's about it. He can't. He can't make people float for some reason. Anyway, there was a scene where when he was demonstrating his powers, he touches one of Zoro's weights. It flies up, and he sold everybody. He like chain. He lets it spin a bit. Then he cuts it off. It falls super fast. It just falls, and Zoro just goes. He just catches it like the like in the impact. Like it's falling fast, and Zoro just goes. <clears throat> All right, like he, that, that, that that was a pretty cool scene. It wasn't like, yeah, let's get it. He just stone cold. He wasn't even looking too. I just realized that he was looking straight at Siki. Everybody was talking. I'm like, okay, okay, so bro, we got some skills. I see you. Um, he can't make people float. Yeah, I already said that. Uh, oh yeah, Siki asked them what he like, what they like to go to his home base as a thanks for him, for getting him out of that cyclone. Luffy says, no, we're gonna go head back to the East Blue. Usopp was like, are you serious? We got an Avenger. It ain't going nowhere. 
We have to save our own hometown. Don't you want that? You want everybody to die? No, I guess so. That, if, I, yo, if we ever heard something like that in the manga, like Luffy, like, yeah, let's go back to the East Blue real quick. When that this deep into the new world, I'll be like, yo, that'd be why. I don't know what I would do. I don't know what I would say. Because it's like, it's going to take at least almost a year to get back into the East Blue. Who knows how long to go back to East Island, save it, then go all the way back through the East Blue, calm belt, all the way through the Grand Line, then go all the way through the New World back to where you was, and then keep going. That's going to take forever. <laughs> that is going to take a long time. I, I, you know, like I said, if that actually happened in the canon of the manga, I don't know what the fandom is going to think. I, I really don't know what, what what's going to go on between the whole One Piece community if that happens. Uh, let's see. Let me get ready. Oh yeah, there was a little joke to where, um, uh, Golden Light Siki he says, uh, oh okay, that's really passionate. I really like you guys. How about I make your sip float? I can take it to the East Blue right now to make it easier, so you don't have to like you know glide on the water the whole time. They're like, yeah. So they've been floating for about a while. They've been floating in the air for about a while. They just waiting. They're ready to get to the East Blue. Uh, Chopper, so next time Chopper, <laughs> Chopper. Luffy and Usopp, they're looking over like at the water and they're like, yo, this is so cool. This is crazy. We're floating. And Nami was like, you guys don't really look ready for battle. And that outfit's are really cool. Brooke is like, yeah, guys, get ready for battle. We have to get ready to die or to fight really powerful foes. And he's in that like really nice looking orange black stripe. It's not, it's not a dress, but like a dress suit. Like in a dress suit. And he's he got his cane out. Like he got his sword out of his cane. It's in the grass on the deck. And he's leaning on it. He's like, yeah, guys, you got to get ready. And I'm like, you, you look more relaxed than anybody. What are y'all doing? Put some battle on my arm. Get your hockey up. Well, it ain't no hockey right now. But, you know, get your devil fruits ready. Get your sword. We're preparing for a battle. Get ready for this. Come on, man. Uh, sorry. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not aggravated. I'm just, I, I was talking really fast. I got on the air. I got flown to him. Oh, yeah. Okay. So the next part is Siki's like, Welcome to my wonderful hideout. You can stay as long as you like. Adventurers like yourself will love this island. He grabs Nami. Everybody goes to attack Siki. But then Siki tucks his sign. Boom. Everybody falls. They're still floating. Luffy does a gum gum pistol. And it's trying to get to him. Like, it's stretching. It's really trying to get to Siki. And Siki does, like I said, he just goes, He turns the boat and the whole boat hits everybody. Everybody falls and they go on their separate ways. And I already told you who was with who. All right, next page. We go back into real time and Nami is still talking to him. And I didn't write this down, but I remember this. They bring in Billy, that electric sort of duck bird. They bring in him and the clown is like, you know, this is an evolutionary breakthrough. His species has been able to adapt to discharge electricity. And Nami's like, what? What does that mean? And Siki tells Nami that on this island, like, because this island is all the floating islands are really just one big island. But Siki, like, divided it up and it's floating around everywhere. <clears throat> it's floating around everywhere. Anyway, he says on this particular island, there's this plant called the IQ plant. <clears throat> oh, there's this plant. Okay, sorry. There's this plant called the IQ plant. And it has, and it's like this, uh, like a little old flower. It sort of droops down. It has like liquid in, like you can tell it's liquid, and it's pink, and it has like a red circle around it. And, like the flower part is clear. You can see the liquid, the red circles on the outside. It looks pretty cool. Anyway, like the substance inside of it, if an animal eats or drinks or injected into them, it gets bigger and stronger. And, and like manipulates it because like the animals there are already kind of weird like weird looking and weird sort of like the, sorry the animals they are already unique and weird so like when you see like a deer flying it's already like that but the iq plant can enhance it to make it bigger stronger more adaptation sort of so that maybe not a deer can swim underwater have gills and stuff but the only way that's been able to happen because uh, Siki, he's been like manipulating it. Like, no, not Siki, but the scientist, he's been manipulating it and making it more potent. And he grabs, Siki says that every single IQ plant on this island, I've been harvesting for the last 20 years. I've been manipulating the functions of the IQ plant 
and he gets his hunters to go chase some animals outside, you know, hit it with an arrow that has the new substance in it that's combined with the IQ and put it inside a weird, like, a, let's say this, like, gorilla that's really buffed and jacked. Boom, the new substance that Shiki made gets injected into it. Boom, the uh, giant gorilla gets even more buff and it grows two more arms. So it's like four arms and it's super buff and it gets gigantic. And the more substance it takes, the more aggressive it gets and the more wild it gets. And he's been doing this for like the past 20 years. No wonder the animals keep killing each other like crazy on this island. All the animals are crazy strong. And not me actually, you know, why are you doing this? He was like, hey, here's a point that I always, that, yeah, here it is. Uh, sorry, I was uh, making sorry. This come this comes back later. He says, "I'm not gonna tell you everything just yet, but I will tell you everything." And I always do a favor for one of my crewmates. But still, I'm not joining your crew, or you will. You'll be begging and crying. He he says it specifically. You'll be begging and crying on your knees to join my crew. And when you do, you can get that sad scene out of the way. And I'll tell you everything you ever wanted to know, even about the IQ point. And he walks off, and it cuts to Sanji and Usopp. And this scene, this scene was funny because as soon as it starts, he goes, "Nami Swan." Usopp goes, "Can you quiet now? You're gonna. <gasps> it's a bug. <laughs> and the bug. It's a giant dung beetle. And the dung beetle sweeps out fire. And Usopp's like, "It's fire!" Ah! Boom! It cuts again. He goes, "Robin Swan." Be quiet. It's an animal. Oh, cuts. Nami Swan. Can you just be quiet already? And they're running away from another animal. And then it just goes, Robin. Another another animal is chasing them. Can you just shut up? And they're just they're trying to run. Uh, it's so funny. <laughs> the first one, the first instinct was funny because he was like, you're going to attract. Oh, it's a bug. Oh, it, it sucks to suit fire in the way Usopp just says, oh, it's a bug. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was too funny of me. He said, it's a bug. Oh. <laughs> so I see it, Usopp just started booking it out of there. Anyway, it's trying to eat that. <laughs> oh my gosh. The giant tiger is finna eat. I mean, not tiger. Sorry, dang it! I went ahead of myself. The giant caliper is finna eat them. So they jump and they grab some vines, and the caliper falls. And while they're climbing on some vines, they notice that Usopp notices that one of the vines that Songi is holding is actually a giant whisker from a giant blue two-tailed tiger. And the tiger jumps on the ground. Uh, Songi, he's like holding Usopp by the leg, and he was holding on to the vine. He throws Usopp on the land, and he's like, yo, where did Sanji go? He looks at the vine, and Sanji climbed up the tree that the tiger was laying on, and he runs, and he does that, you need, he does that, um, should I keep it on? Uh, the jump's gonna start popping up. Okay, anyway, he, um, he climbs the tree that the tiger was laying on, and he jumps off of it, and he does that, you know, unique technique where he extends one leg and he starts to spin really fast. And then that leg that was extended slams right into the tiger's head and it hits the island and the island starts to crack a bit. And I'm like, okay, that's good. Now we need to keep moving to find the rest of the crew. And the crew notes throughout the movie that it's been about a week since they were lost on the island. It's been about a good week. <clears throat> Sorry, it's been about a good week. Anyway, he hits the tiger so hard that it cracks the island at the arm. Then out of nowhere, these like bulls in the tree come out of nowhere. And like they look, they sit there and then boom, they disappear. And then they hit right into the island, right at that crack that Sanji made. And they keep doing this over and over and over. And the whole island cracks in half and it falls. And they fall in the ocean. And then boom, they just pass out in the ocean. And it cuts. It's just really wild. It cuts to this little girl. And she has like tiny wings, and he has she has an IQ plan in her hand. You notice, and it's like a winter sort of island. And she finna she sees these two monsters like fighting. She sees it was like sort of a dinosaur type and a snake type. They're fighting, and her little quirk is she passes out like, anything that scares her. Like she passes out a lot in this movie. She just go and just falls back because she passes out. If somebody yells, there's a monster, something scary, you just pass out. And anyway, she sees them fighting, and one monster kills the other one. And throws it, and it comes like it doesn't come like right up to her face, but it's pretty close. She gets scared, 
and passes out. The other one is going to eat her, and Zoro comes in and saves her. And then there was a funny scene where Zoro picks up the girl, and he was like, oh, she looks cold. Chopper, give her your fur. Chopper goes, oh, yeah, you're right. I'm not a coat. What made me laugh was this man Chopper was really considering give, like taking his fur off. Like He was like, oh, yeah, you're right, and he does this. And it looks like he like, like he's gonna take off a jacket or something. Like he's gonna take off his shirt or something. He's like, oh yeah, you're right. Wait, I'm not a coat. <laughs> and then they get Manny, the mammoth great great grandfather. It is a giant woolly mammoth that has giant tusks. He has scars. He is bulking. And Chopper and Zoro been riding it. And then her her name was like Zen. Not Zen. It was, it was like I forget her name actually. I really forgot her name. Dang, I'm so sorry. I forgot her name. Dang. Chopper. Weird. I'm in the coat. Uh, oh, yeah. And they introduced themselves. They've been talking. And Chopper asked what she doing out here. And she was like, oh, I was. Um, and then Zoro notices the little IQ plant. Obviously, he doesn't know it's an IQ plant, but he notices this. And he was like, it doesn't matter. We've been lost in this winter zone for about three days. We need to hurry up and get out of here. And she was like, how do you get lost in here three days? You just go that way and boom. They walk this way and you just see a luscious green, sunny skies. It's chopper of like Zoro. You've been leading us in the wrong direction for the past three days. That that wasn't there before. That was so funny. Because you know Zoro, he's bad direction, but three days straight. Because he said it only takes about a half a day to get out of this winter zone. I was like, you couldn't, you guys couldn't see in the distance or you, Anything of this all this sun and greenness over here? Because it's literally just a one like tiny little split line of snow and grass, and then grass and then snow. Yeah, I was like, you guys couldn't see that. That's wild. But anyway, hey, I'm, I'm not judging. <laughs> anyway, I'm not judging. Then it cuts again to Sanji, and he wakes up on a boat. And you know, he just he just like ah, uh, he wakes up, he turns his head. And Usopp still has his socked face. So, like, Sonic, like, imagine you go in the water, you pass out, you just wake up, you're like, huh? You turn your head, you look down, you see Usopp, he's like, he's like, his face, his eyes are whited out, his face is still like, oh, uh, scared from when they were falling. That would have terrified me, like, huh? Whoa. <laughs> like that. But Sonic, you were like, huh? Okay, next page. <laughs> Whoo, I didn't know we had nine pages. Real man paper don't rip. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, man. Sanji, oh, yeah. Sanji, Usopp, they both wake up, and they're looking around the village. It's like a tiny little village. And Sanji and Usopp are looking. They're looking at the village people, and Sanji noticed that, you know, everybody's really thin. There's no, there's no way everybody got a lot of food. And then, you know, the camera keeps zooming in on everybody because every single person, old, young, middle age. They have wings, not like giant wings, but like some people have, some people is like right here, some people is like right on their skin. Little, they get like little fluffs everywhere. And it even gets brought up later in the movie where when Frankie, Brooke, and Robbie are getting information from some of the gangsters that, uh, not Francis Cigarette, that uh, Golden Lion Shiggy is, um, you know, collaborating with. There's this is one waiter girl because they note that all the young men and women, Shiggy took them to like do labor. And she like she's a waiter inside a little cafe there, and she has wings. And Robin asked her about it, and she was like, "Huh? Oh yeah, I really don't know why we have these wings. I kind of feel like I want to fly, or that I'm a bird, or whatever." And Frankie's like, "You know, just because you want to fly doesn't mean you can't fly." She was like, "Huh? I don't know. I guess and her wings are like you know way down here. Like she has some really big, nice wings." Anyway, there was this funny scene to where they're looking at. Everybody in Sanji was like, hey, Usopp, you know there's anything weird? And Usopp is like, yeah. And he's looking at the wings. And he was going to say, you know, he's like, yeah. Everybody got, and Sanji goes, there's no young women here. Is that what you're really concerned about? Like, what? His old lady came. <laughs> also, his old lady came. And she gives Sanji and Usopp some tea and told every, well, oh, this giant transponder snail, like giant video transponder snail comes and, you know, shoves them down. And then she explained that they're constantly surveillance. If you do anything that's wrong, that's uh, not in Lord Siki's favors, he just kills you to make an example. 
we barely have any food here. So even Sanji brings that up because everybody is so thin. You have enough food, food and she was like, eh, we get by. She, they took all the young men and women to do labor. It's just torture and we hate it here. And we even get this, I think, I didn't write this down, but later on in the movie, we find out that all the giant, like, monsters and animals lived in harmony, lived in harmony with all the people there before Siki came and gave them, you know, injected them with the IQ drugs. So that's, <laughs> that sucks. Uh, oh, yeah, so Willie the Mammoth, Manny the Mammoth, he gets to the village, and the village is surrounded by these daffy green trees. And if you notice, in the anime, I guess it's around the same time this movie came out because uh, Straw, it was like opening 13 or 14. That island that Luffy went to go train, Lil Skyna, the island that Luffy trained with really on, there was a giant deaf green tree uh, on that island. And Luffy went, he took off his head, he put it on that little stick, you know, the class, he put it on that little rock. And that rock was right in front of a deaf green tree. Obviously, in the canon of manga, that's just a normal tree. But I guess they took the design of that tree because it's the exact same design of that tree. and put it in the movie and it's daft green. And it gives off a smell that animals can't stand. So that makes sense for they have it all around that village. It's okay to humans, but if you inhale too much of it, you get like these green spots in your body and you die. But the only cure for it is IQ. But Siki took all IQ. And the little girl, mother, I mean not mother, but her grandmother has like the green spots. And you know, only cures like you. Uh, see, I, I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't know. I'm laughing. Anyway, they get there, and the woman member runs off. And top of notes is probably the smell guy. I can't stand it either. Cause they're all like, "Hey, huh, come on, let's keep going. It doesn't matter. Just be a man." And the little girl's like, "I can lead you to my village. It's over there." And top of like, "Man, I can't stand the smell. It hurts so bad." Cheryl gets next to a tree. He's like. Hmm. I guess it kind of does stink, doesn't it? <laughs> He's like, I guess it kind of does stink, doesn't it? And then a the little girl knows, don't breathe in too much or you could die. He was like, thanks for telling me if I just took the biggest, biggest, oh, oh. <laughs> oh sorry. Before, before I took the biggest whiff in the world, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, thank you for telling me this junk is poisonous after I took a, the biggest whiff. Uh, that green tree opened in 14, like I just said. That, that's a pretty neat, though. Like, they took the exact same design of that tree in anime and put it in the movie. Uh, yeah, be braving too much of it. You get the green spot, only cures that Q. So, they get to the house, and the mother's mad. She slap her, and we find her grandmother. She has the green spots, and she just wanted one. You know, her the little girl went past out the village to get an IQ plant so, so they can heal her grandmother. But her mother says you're gonna need more than just one IQ plant to heal the disease, especially how bad it is for a grandmother. Chopper says he never seen anything like this. He can't help her, and to try to do anything with the medicines he do have could be reckless and could kill her faster. Zoro says, "Yeah, that's true. Well, we still gotta look for everybody else. Let's just rest for a moment." And he finds some stairs and sit down. And the exact same village that Usopp and Sanji is in is the exact same one there. And Sanji and Usopp find. Some stairs, the exact same stairs as Zoro's on. Sanji sits down, Zoro, I mean, Sanji sits down too. And then Zoro and Sanji both look up and look at each other and they notice, oh, snap, they're there. You know, Chopper and, and Usopp, they're like, oh, snap, hey, it's been so long. Ah. <laughs> it was a funny moment because Zoro's like this, he looks up and looks down. He's at the top of the stairs. Sanji's like this, you know, he's resting. He looks up, he looks up. So they both look at each other and they go, Huh? Oh, hey, it's you. I look back down. And Chopper's like, huh? Ho no, Sanji, what's up? Uh, this is my boy. Uh, this is my boy. And they started hugging. I thought it was funny because they were like, huh? Oh, it's you. I was like, oh, it's whatever. It's Sanji. It's just Zoro. And they just go back to sleep. I'm like, okay. Next scene after that, yeah, the boys meet. Oh, yeah, we get, like, the, it was, like, a two, not two, but it was, like, a 12-second scene of, like, all these crooked Marines and all these pirates meeting up at this, uh, and meeting up at this one island to just hang out with each other because, like, Siggy is getting all of these random pirates and crooked Marines to join them so they can take down the East Blue first 
that didn't take over the whole world with the animals and everybody's help. So it's just just a little scene. Everybody's just meeting up. It's whatever. Uh, next scene: Nami escapes with the electric bird. Apparently, there's like a sewer drain that leads out of the pool that she swims in into the outside world. She holds on to the bird. He breaks the like little hacks, and they swim through. Boom! They get off that island. They're falling, and they fall on another island. There's a bunch of these sea monsters that come in, and the bird electrocutes all of them. And Nami passes out, and he thinks he just killed her because he gives you like the big shock of electricity in the water that she was in too to kill those monsters. And he like he you know he's a bird, so he like he has a, a really big bill. He like pokes her like once or two times, like a little, little softly. And Nami, she sort of passed out, but she's like, each time he does it, she's kind of moved. He's like, oh, it's working. <laughs> Boom, Nami does the meanest right hook. She was like, that hurts. It was funny because, you know, he goes, poke, poke. And Nami's like, oh, she's alive. <laughs> he just goes ham on her. He's like, da, 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 with that giant bill. And she was like, that hurts. What are you doing? Stop hitting my head. What, what, you, what is wrong with you? <laughs> That's uh, funny. So Nami gets up after that. <clears throat> Apollo gets to the burner. They hug. And she looks over and she notices oh, it's the sunny. She finds the sunny. She's running down to it. And like this big explosion, ha explosion happens in the forest. And then Luffy runs out. And Luffy's like, oh, it's the sunny. Luffy, Nami, I'm so happy to see you. And Luffy's running after to go hug Nami. And out of nowhere, three giant scorpions are running after Luffy, plus a giant lion. So Luffy like, Nami, it's so great to see you. Giant monsters right behind him. He's leading them to Nami. Nami's like, oh, shoot. Stop chasing me, Charlie. They're running up the mountain. But then Billy swoops it down, electrocutes them. They're done. They eat him. Uh, oh, yeah, did I say the octopus already? I think I did. Because Luffy was like, can I eat this? And when I was going over, everybody wanted to add. Luffy had a stick with some octopus on it. And that was the same type of octopus that he was fighting. I think I said that already, but if I didn't, there it is. If I didn't, there it is. Anyway, after they're done, oh yeah, uh, after they're done, they're just talking about what should we do if we just wait at the sunny for everybody else. We'll be like, nah, that's kind of boring. Let's go out and find them. I'm like, okay, let's just you know mark this place and they're right on Billy and they go look for everybody. Then it cuts to Frankie, Robin, and Brooke and they're riding on a lobster motorcycle First motorcycle in the world. Anyway, they're riding on it and they just they just talking like they normally talk. And then they get to like this bar place where some of the more crooked marines and bad guys are. I just say bad guys, just pirates, just, you know, random refresh pirates. They find one of those places in the like, huh, What is that place? We should go in. And when they try to park, the there's a daft green tree around it, and obviously the lobster thing jumps back and lands, and Frankie punches it. And he like, well, it's whatever, it won't move no more. We're gonna have to walk. And that's, that's the whole scene. And it cuts again. <clears throat> the next on the next page. Wait, is this the next page? Yeah, 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 yeah this is it. <clears throat> uh, talking work. Oh, oh yeah. <clears throat> uh, here we go. So Luffy and Nami, they find the same village that Zoro, Sanji, Usopp, and Chopper are in. And they go meet them. Everybody's happy. They're hugging. Uh, Sanji's like, I can finally rest because uh, he said, I can finally rest because I've been looking for you guys all the time. I want to make sure the ladies were fine. Then he passes out. But then he wakes right back up. He's like, wait a second. Robin is still missing. Dang it, man. And Usopp was like, yeah, you're right. For the week that me and Sanji were together, this man would not shut up about Robin and Nami. He, he kept us up all night. He kept me up all night. He kept us up all night because he wouldn't be quiet. Anyway, oh, yeah, there's a giant transponder snail that sees everybody, and obviously Siki knows. Uh, then it cuts to Brooke. Nah, so Brooke, Frankie, and Robin. Brooke, Frankie, and Robin are in that hut where everybody's drinking. And one dude in particular, South Town, he was like, oh, you guys are part of the Straw Hats. I didn't expect because of you guys' reputation, I didn't expect you guys to be part of this organization. Frankie gets mad and he was going to tell him like that. But then Robin, the smart one, goes, yeah, you're right. So what are we doing here? He tells them, we don't find out everything till later. But I'm like, sorry, so we don't find everything out till later. 
But obviously, Siki is making those monsters even bigger and stronger. He set them out on the East Blue just to have some warning shots. He's going to have everybody do like a sake cup thing tonight, like a ceremony, so we can all be blood brothers and then we can all team up and take over the world. Then he was like, uh, you have to have different dresses. I mean, you have to like wear more formal. He's like, you know, they're getting information. And while they're getting information from this dude and talking to him, Brooke is like, in the scene, Brooke is like drinking something. And then his mouth just goes like this. I don't know about in the sub, but in the dub, while they're talking and Brooke is drinking this, he goes, why they're talking about important business. And this made me laugh so hard because I'm like, you know, like, huh, okay, giant monsters, da 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 like, boy, what are you doing? Can you stop? <laughs> We're trying to get this information from this dude. Like, what are you doing here? And then the then that girl with the wings, that was that. That's what I told you about. Then it cuts to the little girls going to the east. Wait, what? Oh, yeah, he's going to the east. Um, oh, yeah, I forget, I forget, I forget. Uh, the little girl tells her mom, that Siki, because Siki is letting everybody go that he has, all the wavy people. He's letting everybody go back to the village. And one dude asked him why. And Siki was like, I'm going to give them some hope before I do some despair. Because Siki destroys that whole village that's there before, but after they fight. That's really jacked up. Anyway, so the little girl comes and notes that everybody's coming back. I think our dad, yeah, yeah, dad should be back soon because there was like some of her friends, like her brother came back, the sisters came back and stuff like that. Anyway, and she also tells her that they're going to be, uh, sorry, <laughs> she, also tells, she also tells her mother that Siki's going to the East Blue. He's going to pack up and leave. And she's like, her mother's like, yes, that's the East Blue problem now. We can be a happy family again. This is going to be so great. And Nami's in there. She's freaking out. She walks out because she's not like yelling and stuff. But she's like, oh, my goodness. This is why, you know, I need to go tell everybody. So they walk out. And then Siki fights Luffy, Sanji, Chopper, and Usopp. It's a pretty good fight. Sorry, this is how the, oh, yeah, Chopper gets the first hit. Makes it ground. Oh, yeah, okay. So this is what happens. They're talking. He was like, Luffy was like, you're not finna just take one of my crewmates and just get away with it scot free. Siki was like, oh, what are you gonna do about it? I'm gonna break you in half. Luffy grabs, like, this is a little piece of earth there. He grabs it, he does a pistol, he misses. Siki floats up. Usa comes around, has a perfect shot, Firebird Star. Siki's like, huh? Oh, no, you don't. He ducks it. Then he chop it come from behind. He does that technique to where his arms get big, his face gets skinnier. And his hooves come out, and he does the he does like the rapid lotus like attack, and it hits his back. It's a critical hit. And Siki's like, ah. Then Sanji, he's running and he jumps up and he does like a pull of the air kick, and Siki goes ah, psych. And it pan the camera pans out and it shows that Siki actually caught Sanji's fist, but it's like smoke coming from it. And he was like, okay, you guys make a pretty good team. It's not every day I have to use my hands. But today's the day he died. He cocked back his hand and he fed a hell. But then Luffy, on that same piece of earth that he grabbed and he missed, he put both hands on it, extended back, flew into the rocket. And then I, I was, it was kind of weird because after he like made Siki fly a bit, he didn't go like, oh, you know, flying, but he went a few couple feet. Luffy and Sanji are free falling. And Luffy, like, oh, are you still talking to that guy? Sanji, nah, 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 we're done. Land. Siki goes, so you guys think we're on the same power level? Oh, yeah, sorry. I forget. Zoro, he does like two slashes swords him, and then Siki blocks him with his sword feet. Um, anyway, he was like, so you guys think we're on the same power level? I think not. Then he makes a bunch of lion's heads out of the earth. So I'm guessing the way, because the very first couple of times I watched this, I was very confused. I was like, how is he doing this? His power is a flow flow fruit. I'm guessing, you know, he already touched this island has already flown, so he already has control of this whole island. He already has he already touched this island and it's already floating. He already, he already has control over this whole island. So I'm guessing that he like made all this earth and rock float upwards, but in the shape of a lion head. 
and the, and the lion headers are like roaring and they're moving closer and closer to the group. There's like four or five, and they're like moving like they, they are alive. Now that's probably for just aesthetic purposes. Just purposes. That's probably just for aesthetic purposes. But uh, you know, it looks cool. You know, it just looks cool for them to move around and start roaring and stuff. But he makes them come up. Luffy, he starts to you know start going at it. He starts doing the Gatling. Then he puts his arm together. Boom! He makes a cannon. Then this is like I really like this move that they do. Zoro and Sanji do a combo attack to where you know San Zoro jumps up. He lands on Sanji's leg, and then Sanji cocks back and throws him. Not throws him, but he like kicks him towards Shiki. And he does like a normal 65 caliber Phoenix, and he misses. I know he doesn't miss. Shiki blocks it. Uh, I don't know about a movie. Okay. Uh, I don't think anybody's watching a movie tonight, though. I don't really know. I don't really know if anybody's watching a movie tonight. Uh, anyway, he blocks it. <clears throat> and all the Earth combines, and Luffy, Sanji, Zora, Usopp, they're out there complete. He uproots the Earth. And he has everybody stuck in a stone. That's stone. Yeah, I, I guess stone. He got everybody stuck in like a stone pillar. Everybody is passed out except for Usopp. Siki tells them to join his crew. Where are we under? Where are we gonna watch the movie tonight? I'm pretty sure Chris don't want nobody else over. He just got us out of his house. For what? Wait, there's no way to watch a movie. Whose house are we going to go to? Please tell me somebody's house we're going to go to, and I'll consider it. I need one logical person. Anyway, everybody is passed out except for Usopp. Shiki told Nami to join his crew. Nami said, as long as you leave the East Blue alone, and you don't kill my friends, I'll do it. Usopp is awake, and he's yelling at Nami. This was like a really emotional scene because he's like, don't join his crew. You can't be this stupid. Nami, you know we're going to get out of this. Nami, please don't do this. And he keeps talking and talking and talking. And then Shiki makes a rock float up and then slam right into Usopp's face and he gets knocked out. And then Nami says, I'm going to join your crew. And he was like, eh, I don't believe you. And then Nami gets on her knees. She don't start crying like he said, but he gets on her knees. And she was like, can I please join your crew? Almighty Golden Lion Seeky. Please, please, please. My garage is not up to standard right now. And take out. Look, man, I, I don't know, man. I think I think about it. My garage really ain't that clean right now. I'm gonna have to go clean it, have a bunch of dudes over, and I ain't really got that much money. Look. I'll talk to you when I'm done. I, I, I'll call you when I'm done. I got to do this real quick. I'll be done in like another, maybe like another 20. I got like few, I got five pages left. Really? I don't know. Uh, give me like 20 or something minutes. Yeah, give me give me like another 30 to 20 minutes. I'll get to you on there and I'll talk to you. Anyway, uh, GL is not me giving a message. Oh, yeah. So after C begs, and he joins his crew. He was like, I'm not a heartless man. You know, I know you had your fun times with him. I mean, I'm not with him. I know you had your fun times with the crew that you just had. So here, leave him a message to have a proper farewell. And he gives her the tone dial. And I mean, does the message. You hear like two seconds of it and it cuts off. He's like, oh, that's heartwarming. And so they fly off on a piece of rock. You see everybody coming together. Siki men are taking down the uh, green, the daft green trees around that village so the monsters can come destroy them. Or the animals, but I'll put monsters, you know, basically. So the animals can come destroy the village. The animals do destroy the village. You see, we see a scene of a little girl, her mom and her grandma. They're running away to the bomb shelters. It's not a bomb shelter, but, you know, it's to like a shelter. The monsters are just wrecking this place up, man. We see a few new ones, like the deer. There was like a couple deer that were flying in that horn who were like, so like this, like elevated, and then they just start to glide on the wind, and they go back on the island. They start running again. We see like this long snake. We see this giraffe. There was like this pink. There was a giant penguin 
that knew how to box. Like there was these really weird and unique animals that was pretty. I really, I really like that about Strong World. Like all these unique, strange animals. I, mean, I really like that part of Strong World. Anyway, uh, let me even crew down here. Oh yeah, um, uh, let's let's lay down though. Let's lay down. Anyway, they have a praying mantis motorcycle now. Frankie, Robin, and Brooke. And they find they find everybody and dig them out. And then they catch everybody up to speed. They tell them that Siki is the one that does the attacks on the East Blue. He's gonna destroy the whole East Blue heck over the world. He has like a bunch of allies now because of corporate marines and a bunch of random riffraff pirates. And <clears throat> that's about it. Oh yeah, the little girl finds the little uh, not, not, what was it called? The, the tone dial. She finds the tone dial and gives it to them. But right before that, the whole family was crying and they felt bad because you know they just found out that everybody in the crew was from the East Blue, from the East Blue, basically. And she was like, "Oh, that girl was in the house." We were saying that's East Blue's problem, and Siki is going to destroy the East Blue. Uh, we, I wonder how mad we made her, how bad she feels. We have to be the most worst people in the world. We weren't even thinking about. The feelings of everybody in East Blue. We were just ready for Siki to get out of our land. Luffy goes, um, your whole village just got destroyed. A lot of people probably just died. And you're more worried about Nami's feelings. You're the most caring people that I've ever met. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. That was pretty nice. Anyway, they click on it. Wait, Luffy goes, uh, oh yeah. So they, he clicks it and they hear it. And the first half of the message, they only hear Luffy only hears half of it. The first half is saying that goodbye, you guys. I'm joining Shiki. He's one of the most legendary pirates in the world. You can't match up to him. Please don't come for me. Uh, no, 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 sorry. She said you can't beat him. <coughs> she goes, you can't beat him. He's one of the most legendary pirates. Um, I'm joining his crew now. You know, classic stuff. I love this scene. See, to this day, I watched this movie about six times. To this day, this scene still gives me chills. Luffy gets mad, and he turns it off. And he goes, what the heck is this? And the song, he like, the whole crew gets shook by the yelling. Chopper, like, his ears hurt. Everybody either has, like, a weird expression or they're sweating. And it's Sanji and Usopp's reaction really hit because when these movies starts yelling and he gets mad they both like jerk back a bit they're like but like, they really get scared about how hard Luffy gets mad and see what he was like you know oh I, I, I didn't word it down word for word oh yeah he was like how could you say how how could she say this about us you don't talk about your own crew this way <clears throat> so I'm not really getting this off to with my throat he said how could you say this about us you don't talk about your own crew that way and Usopp telling him to calm down. Frankie was like, well, to be honest, he did just beat all you guys. And he was like, no, he didn't. He, he got lucky. He tricked us. And he's still telling him to shut up and calm down. Luffy just throws it. Like he, I mean, he just, like, you know, gives it to Usopp. And he walks off. And Sanji's like, hey, let's hear the rest of that message. So they play it again. You hear the first half. And it cuts off. And everybody's like. And then Luffy walks over. It's like this wall of rock. Just a big wall of rock. So they're walking. I mean, Luffy walks up to everybody freaking out. He cocked back his arms so much. It went past the crew. They were like at least 10 feet away. Like he flung his arm that way. And it's coming back. And he just punches a really like diagonal dent in that wall of rock. Like he demolishes a giant hole in it. And he is just <sighs> and his eyes are black. Like he is mad that Nami will say this about crew so you couldn't match up to him but he's too strong what is like you know everything we've been through you're gonna say all this come on now like luffy is really mad about this he is not letting this go then it cuts and we see all types of animals oh yeah wait oh yeah there's this one little scene to where he sees like all the animals fashion about everybody's coming in to do the sake ritual and he goes man this is the first time in 20 years I've ever felt my legs tingle. Oh, okay, that, that, that was pretty deep. I mean, that deep, I get, I don't know. That, that, that was really deep and unique, I guess.
on the next team. Uh, I didn't ask before. Oh, yeah, so the dude, the clown dude comes in, and he's telling Siki that Nami broke out. Well, not broke out, but she snuck out. There's a bunch of death green trees around the building, and she was planning on exploding them. She only exploded, like, two or three, and then she inhaled too much, and she got the green spots, and she can barely breathe. Siki leaves her out there, and he was like, you can still survive out here after the ceremony. I'll come back out here, give you the answer, though. You can still join my crew. Cause they have a soft spot for a feisty woman. Anyway, Lopi and the crew show up. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Anyway, Luffy and the crew, they show up. And this is the nicest not nicest. This is the funniest. They no, okay. They are let me get this out the way. The clothes they wear are awesome. You know they're awesome. They're in a suit and ties. We have that giant black um I was gonna say dragon, that giant black jacket on, but it's only on his shoulder. Like well, like in one piece. I don't know why that's so cool. Like the giant jacket just on your shoulder, so it's like flying about and your arms are so here. That's really cool. Everybody got these giant, I don't know where they got these from, but everybody got these giant like bazooka weapons out. Not out, but they got them like on their side. They're walking in the ceremony. CD like, oh, so you want around two, don't you? And Luffy, he he says that Nami didn't just join your crew to join the crew. She joined your crew so she could attack from the inside. Sanji got the blue vest on. Luffy got the blue vest on. He got a black tie on. Like everything they're wearing is boss move. Like that is sexy, bro. Like that, what they're wearing is cool and nice. Put a put a tux on almost anybody, and it's awesome. <laughs> and it's awesome. I just love the tux suit on them. And then they just start blasting. They got the bazooka thing. Boom, boom, boom. They just start blasting everywhere. It was a scene with Luffy. Uh, like Zoro and the Sanji standing beside each other, and they're just going off. And it was kind of weird for me the first time I watched it. I was like, Sanji's not fighting, so I guess it's okay for him to suit because he normally doesn't use his hands. But I was like, can you counter such fighting? I guess technically not, but it's whatever. There's a blast, and there's a it's not a funny scene, but it was like, what? So they Sanji and Zoro, they're like, you know, going this, you know, blasting everywhere. They zoom in on Siki's face, he's getting mad. Then Luffy, he just comes in the middle out of nowhere. He just runs up. He goes, <laughs> like he's just going off with the bazooka. He's just shooting everything. They run out of bullets, and I'm like, okay, let's get to work. There's still a bunch of people left standing up. So they go off to fight them. Everybody's fighting, you know, Frankie with the right hook, the left hooks, weapon to left, um, Brooke with the soul solid, the Robin, Sifleur, Booms, Chopper, and Usopp when they go find Nami. They do because it was a, it was a, I, I, I always forget. <laughs> I'm sorry. I always forget how strong Chopper is because uh, Usopp is riding Chopper in his deer form. And they're shooting down bad guys. They find Nami. And Nami is with Billy because the movie named it Billy. Nami's with Billy. And see, Billy, like, I mean, Nami connects a bunch of wires together before she passes out. Billy does electricity, it blows up all the daft green. It was funny because Chopper and Usopp find her and like they jump and like they had to jump over like a log or something. I don't know. And Nami's right here and they jump and they're like, Nami, but as soon as they're like midair and they look at her, like Usopp, I go this way and he sees like it's dynamite everywhere. And it's like right there, boom, and it blows up. Boah! And they get blown back or they get Nami and they got to try to find her to answer them now. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, they just start fighting. So Luffy, he walks towards Siki. Siki is like, you know what? I'm gonna just get out of here real quick. No, he he didn't say that. One of one of his like lackeys was like, Siki, we gotta go. Come through the back door with me. Siki was like, you know what? You're right. Let's go. So Luffy takes off his jacket. So he just got his vest and a black tie on now. He's walking towards him, and Luffy is like, you know, Siki, what you do to Nami? He punches him. And Siki just doesn't do anything. He just looks at him and flies away. 
and Luffy is just running to him. He is booking it. The clown dude comes up with a giant. Yeah, the clown dude, he gets bigger out of nowhere, too. He has a giant sword, and he comes down at Luffy. Luffy dodges, Zoro comes in. He was like, that's not your fight. My captain is busy. Then the giant gorilla tries to block Luffy. Sanji comes in, kicks him in the side. He goes flying. Look, <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Like, hi, 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 hi. I know you're joking. I know you're joking. But if you keep if you keep promoting this, I don't want no random person thinking I'm giving away a PS5. I ain't got that. If I did have that, I'm not doing. I'm never doing a giveaway on this channel. That's too much work. I bought it with my look. I'm not doing. I'm not doing a PS5 giveaway. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're talking about. Anybody in chat thinking that that is all lies? I'm not trying to have somebody like you know. Hey, you giving away PS5 now? Like no, I'm not. I'm not doing that. I don't know what he's talking about. Anyway, it just cuts because Luffy is running after uh, Siki. Then it just cuts. Then right after that, they find Nami. I already said that. Uh, yeah, the trees they go boom. Well, we only about we only get about two pages left. Oh yeah, okay yeah, we got two pages left. Let's get it. Man, are we? Yeah, hour in here. Uh, oh yeah, I I guess this is no. I, I wrote it down, but I guess it's not that important. Um, we get the laughter style of the clown. He goes, Pedo, 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 Pedo. And it's whatever. And then, so Zoro fights the clown dude because he has the antidote for the dab green that Nami has. So he fights him. And his moves are chemical juggling. I guess what you don't mean the lines of this. Oh, his moves are chemical juggling. This movie, this movie fights weren't that amazing. They were okay, especially Zoro's and Sanji's fight. Like, they just wash their opponents because all he does is out of nowhere he does chemical juggling and like these like chemical flames just come out of his hand oh my zero zero blocks him oh wait like he's being humble bro he's just trying to keep everyone from entering the giveaway you gotta like say and enter a chance to win the ps5 giveaway yes. you know why? but do like say and subscribe do do all that but there's no PS5 coming for you guys. I'm sorry. Xbox every day. When I get the new Xbox, I'm not doing. I'm never gonna do a giveaway on this channel. I don't want to like buy something. And be like, all right, I'm gonna just give it away to some random person. <laughs> I bought that. But that's me. I'm, I'm not giving away stuff. <laughs> anyway, he does chemical juggling. Zoro blocks it, and then it does an explosion. Then he does a giant gas ball of chemicals. Throws it at Zoro. Zoro goes Asura. Beats him in one slice, and then he, the dude explodes, and he gets the antidote and throws it to his chopper and Usopp to give the Nami. And the weird thing was, I was like, you know, Zoro really didn't need to go into Asura, but I guess they were like, when we have a movie budget, movie animation, Asura will look cool in movie animation. Let's just do it. Uh, I guess I guess I love what they were thinking, because there was like really no reason for Zoro to go Asura. It wasn't, the fight lasted for like, 30 seconds, 40 seconds tops. Like, that was a really mediocre fight for Zoro. But, you know, this movie wasn't really all about the fights. It was more about the story, I guess. And, you know, it's Golden Lion Suki and, you know, the animation. It is like the first actual One Piece movie where it has somewhat kind of stuff in it. And Oda actually worked on it. I guess they weren't trying to go, like, all out, like, Stampede. Anyway, right after that, wait. Uh, What was that? Wait, I think I went ahead of myself. You're sick. Oh, yeah, I forget. So, uh, next Hopper. Um, Shiki, he finds Chopper, uh, Usopp, and Nami, and he's going to kill him. And then he makes giant lions out of the snow that's around them. At first, the first couple of times I watched it, I thought it was snow. I mean, I thought it was the clouds. That was like the whole clouds, all the clouds are black, and it's snowing, and you see snow everywhere. And then he does this, and then they come up from the ground. Hold on. Oh, it's the snow. I always thought it was the clouds for some reason. Next video, he said he's giving away like three Xbox Series X away. And the chance of winning the giveaway are hot. I ain't never seen nothing like that. Man, I haven't made a video in like through the two days. I'm just coming back. Look, <laughs> I swear, yo. Hi, I swear if somebody 
texted me in the comics about a PS5 or Xbox One. I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't do nothing. I'm not giving away no Xboxes. Nobody better text me about no Xbox One or PS4. I mean, PS5, what in the world? He's lying. He's lying. I ain't never talk about this at all. At all. Anyway, um, he makes some in it, and they're still moving around like they're alive, and it looks really cool. But Luffy comes in as gear second. He punches all the lions away. And it's and that's the scene where he's really mad, and he has gear second on. And then Luffy, he bends his knees again, and he increases the steam. I think I think he does that in the manga maybe once or twice, where he just he goes into a gear second pose, and he doesn't pump his legs, but he like flexes his muscles, and the steam gets even more great from his body, and it's just propulsing. And while he's fighting, he goes out to fight Siki, and while he's fighting him, he rides uh, Billy the Electric Bird because obviously he can't fly. So yeah, he, he just flies because you know if Siki can fly, he can't. So he just uses the bird to fly with him. Right after that, Sanji he fights the gorilla. So there was a scene where all the animals break into the place and everybody's fighting them, even the straw hacks. And Robin almost passes out by defeating this giant butterfly because it's like blown to death, green in her mouth and her nose. And the giant gorilla grabs her. And then we find out the gorilla is on top of this tower. And Sanji sees that. He was like, put her down, you perverted ape. And it's like fire around him. And he runs up this like long string, kicks it. There was this random bamboo with nugs, so he keeps him away. So the baboon, I mean, the giant gorilla is on the top of the tower. Songi gets into at the bottom. This though, this blah, this dude goes supersonic speed up the tower. He goes up there right to the top in less than two seconds. He is just speeding, and just like Zoro, Songi defeats the gorilla pretty easily. He just goes a lot. The like Jamba he jumps up in the air. He does mad kicks on this dude. Well, no, at first they clash with the fist. Like, you know, that, that, that's Sanji's face. I mean, he throws a punch. Sanji does a regular kick. It hits him. It burns. It, like, he fist goes like this. He's like, ah. And Sanji does a bunch of rapid kicks. Then he does one final one, and he falls all the way down and hits his head, and he's done. He's just, he's just done. Then Robin is falling in the sky. He's, like, free falling. Sanji's like, oh, shoot, Robin. He jumps to go get her, and then Brooke comes out of nowhere, grabs Robin, and then Sanji falls on the ground. And he was like, I'm going to skin you alive. How would you do that? Boom. And Brooke goes, you know I don't have any skin, don't you? <laughs> what are you saying now? You got to like say this, okay? Next video, he said he's giving away like three. No. Sound clip. Wait. Sound clip. You saying you was the moment you read it. I'm posting on Twitter. Next video, he said he's giving away. Oh, I already read that. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> I think I think he texted the same thing twice. <laughs> uh, I think he texted the same thing twice. The uh, hype. Uh, I, I already read the next video. He said he yeah, I already I already read it. Uh, anyway, um, he he. <laughs> oh Lord, he beats he beats him. He just washes him. Brooke. Oh, yeah, next scene, it just cuts. Then Luffy is going toe-to-toe, -to -toe, blow for blow with Siki. Like, he's riding the bird. He jumps off the bird. He punches Siki through some rock. Siki comes back. They start classing, classing, punches Luffy through some rock. Classing, classing, classing. He grabs the bird again. They fly up, fly up. Boom, boom. Like, they're just going toe-for-toe, -to -toe, blow for blow on this. Oh, yeah, and I forget. When um he uh, the clown dude kept calling like the East Blue worthless and you're from the East Blue you just trash and stuff and then right after Zoro beat him he said worthless is better than dead I I looked straight at that before I even talked about it and I forget my bad that was that was a pretty cool quote <clears throat> uh. Let's see here. Camera all good. Yep. All right. Uh, camera's good. Uh, 
anyway, Siggy gets mad about the fight, and he uses his sword to do some slices in the air, and there's some water on another island that floats, and he traps Luffy in, like, a water. So this was really weird. So he traps Luffy in this water cube. And he was saying, now you're just going to die because you're going to drown. And it sucks a fitting fate for a devil user. So I'm thinking he's going to go fly away. But then he just does a bunch of slashes with his legs to go cut Luffy, I guess. And Luffy breaks out of the water. And he lands on the ground. And he's able to do his final attack. But my thing was, why, why would you do all those slashes when you could have just left him in the water to drown? Because he's a devil fruit user. He can't move. And the bird was passed out too because he, he couldn't breathe. So there was no reason to give, there was no reason to do all those slashes because that broke him out. Really weird. So, anyway, there, uh, there was a little scene where Brooke, he's tying this giant Jolly Roger of Sinky to the Mary. I mean, that's, I mean, to the Sunny. So when it falls off the island, it can just glide down. And while he's doing it, you know, he makes a bone joke. And my thing was, you have Brooke. The dude with no muscle tissue or muscles. He's just a giant skeleton. You have him doing this. I was like, okay, Sanji, he's busy fighting. Uh, Robin, we don't want to do it. But she could maybe because he has a lot of hands, but she can redo it. Uh, then you get Frankie. He's not doing nothing but fighting random monsters. You could have him do it. He got bulk. Chopper was with Nami. Usa was with Nami. Luffy fighting Siki. So, yeah, the most sense would have been probably Frankie. You have Brooke, a skeleton, lifting these giant ropes and tying them to the Sunny. That made no sense. You should have had somebody else besides a skeleton. Come on, man. Anyway, oh, yeah, the music. Oh, yeah, the music when Luffy the Big Shiki. I love this music because it goes dun, dun, da, dun, 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 dun. Like that soundtrack, I love this. Like the first time I watched this, I was in the living room of my old house, and the living room TV it's huge, and those speakers thump. <laughs> those those speakers were going crazy. I'm glad I was home alone when I watched this for the first time because those things were thumping like hard, hard. I love that soundtrack. They do. They I think they brought it back. Again, I heard it again when Luffy was fighting Do Flamingo. I think I think they brought it back for that. I think they brought it back again for something in the anime. Like I love, I love. This. Let's use this soundtrack more often. This soundtrack is awesome. Um. <clears throat> we are not merely. <laughs> Wait, I'm hiccuping. Oh my gosh. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm so... Whew, okay. I really box this stream. Um, we are not millionaires. When I give it away, Jack, do not listen to Hype Beast Morgan. He is my boy, but he's lying about <laughs> He is lying. He is lying about this. <laughs> I'm not giving away no PS5s or anything. Anyway, Luffy's final attack is so he gets Billy a hope. All right, so he gets, so I just, so he gets Billy and he tells him to fly as high as he can in the sky. So he does that. And meanwhile, all it meanwhile all of this is happening. Nami gets the antidote. No, Nami gets the antidote and she's good. And Robin, Frankie, Usopp, Chopper. Well, no, Frankie, Sun, Sun, Usopp was fighting the rest of the random pirates, <laughs> and they're fighting all of the monsters. Nami, she finds out that there's a storm coming from by feeling the wind. So she tricks Siki to turn to turn the ship into the storm. Because one of the guys that's like her navigators, he they like make him call him and tell him, yo, but yo, there's a storm coming, uh, turn to the left. And he does it, but you should really turn to the right. But you should really turn to the right, you know. 
Uh, anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, and they're setting up dynamite all around the castle to blow it up so it can get, everything is gone. Everything is gone. Anyway, Luffy's last attack, he goes all the way up in the air and he gets in the cloud because he jumps off of Billy so Billy can go go save Nami. So he goes get him because Nami tells, no, sorry, I said slow down. Nami tells Shiki about what they're doing and Shiki gets mad and like you see like a little wind bump. You see, like a little wind bubble fly out, and like two two giant islands show up. Yeah, I'm sorry. Two giant islands show up, and he throws them towards Nami. And, and you know the platform he's standing on gets destroyed, and Chopper has to go. I mean, Billy has to go save us. Luffy's in the clouds. Us Usopp does like this electric dragon star, and it misses it misses Siki. It misses Shiki completely, but it goes in the clouds and a giant thunderstorm starts to happen. Luffy goes to get gear third on his leg, and the giant attack is Thor. Boy, he goes gear third, Thor axe. And I was like, so is he saying Thor? Like the like the character Thor. Uh, hype, hype, that better be, <laughs> oh my gosh, hype, that better be you, uh, Jimmy, uh, J I mean, J <clears throat> sorry, I'm hearing a bit, Johnny, there is no PS4 or Xbox One, I mean, PS5 giveaway, um, do subscribe and stuff, I do content, thank you for subscribing, but Hype Beast Morgan is, set is setting all this up, I'm not doing none of this. Please don't listen to him. Hype, that better be you. That better be you, bro. Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Anyway, we see he says thorax. So I was like, is he saying thorax? Because isn't that like a body body part, your thorax? So I was like, was that in the leg or, or not? Because his whole attack was just the leg coming down and the hick seeky and he's done. And I was like, so is that the, he's saying Thor X, like the Thor X? Or is he saying Thor, like the Thor Thor at an X? Because you know, I, I was like, that does make sense to say Thor. Because like, just this one big bolt of lightning comes and hits Luffy. Obviously, that does nothing to him. But like, around him is electricity. Is electricity and it's a beautiful scene where like Luffy is yelling and it's like electricity all around him. And he's spazzing on Shiki. And he brings his leg down and it hicks like Siki tries to throw some rocks at it, but it gets destroyed. It hicks him point blank. He is done. The whole islands are all the islands are crumbling because Luke, I mean Siki is done. Siki actually falls in the water. Like he, he falls in the sea. And all the islands starts to crumble down. So he's done. He's dead. This is like Luffy killed Luffy killed a man. He is so dead. Uh after that. Billy brings Luffy back on the ship. Everybody's back on the ship. Everybody's all fine and dandy. Then we see all the winged people, people from the islands, they fly away. They're just flying like normal. They're all happy, cheering, they're flying. They don't like say goodbye to the Star Hacks or anything, but the Star Hacks see them and they're just flying away to a new island. And the after credit scene, it's just them living in harmony with all the giant mutated animals. Like they said, they were like cause they said back in the day they were framed with the giant animals even before Siki, but after Siki, you know they started to get more aggressive because of the IQ drugs they were taking, so they couldn't. Live. So they couldn't live in harmony anymore with them. Uh, was that everything on this page? The one get people flying. Oh, yeah, and the Marines come, and they capture all the riffraff and that was left and all the crooked Marines. They notice that's the straw hatch, and they go ch chase after them, but, you know, they obviously don't get them. Anyway, Nami is – is this last page? Oh, this is last page. Yeah, this is crazy. Uh, anyway, Nami gets better, and she walks out to the deck, and Luffy is still really mad about the recording. But Luffy didn't hear the last part that says – and if you don't believe me, then – Please come save me. 
you know, but she whispered that part. So, yeah, like, really listen. And the whole crew was like, Luffy, did you hear the rest of the message? And Sanji was like, no, he got mad and he strummed off. Luffy was like, oh, okay, let me listen to the rest. Nami, she starts spazzing because it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing, and she don't want Luffy to hear the rest of it. So she keeps trying to take it from Luffy, but Luffy keeps pushing her back. She actually does take it and finna throw it, but Usopp grabs it, and he was like, "Yo, this is a re- this is really rare from Skype." <clears throat> Sorry, this is really rare from Skype. You can't just throw this out. You can't throw this away. We're never gonna, you know, when's the next time we're gonna? What's the next? Time? When is the next time we're gonna go to Skype? We can't just throw this away. So as Luffy gets it back and he's still listening, I understand Nami's point of view the way it's embarrassing, but Luffy is still mad somehow after he already understood that she lied to Shiki to join his crew so she could attack from the inside. He knows he knows this, but he was still mad. Hey, it's whatever. I'll get to the comics right after I finish this last little quote. Uh, oh, well, the, the last part of the message was prove me wrong and save me. I was in any way. Um, they're all arguing. They're all running away from each other. Luffy's still trying to listen to the message. And boom, Nami's able to, like, flick it out of Luffy's hand. And it falls in the water. But while it's like everybody is like, oh, and it's falling into the water, you hear the last part of the message. And in black, that's it in the movie. The credits were beautiful. You see, like, a piece of everybody on, uh, not nah, like, you see Luffy's straw hat, Robin's hat, you see, like, Usopp's slingshot, like, something, a piece of them, all, like, this little table, and, like, a flash of white comes, and each part gets disappeared. And the last part is just everybody on the deck of the ship, just chilling, looking at each other, and Frankie steering the ship. And that's the credits. And then the after credit scene was, like, what I said. I never knew there was an after credit scene until, like, the third time I watched it, because I think I was sleepy after I was done. Yeah, I, I like passed out mid-movie, woke up, watched the last of it, passed out again during the credits. Then I woke up with like the very last part of the credits, but it rolls up. And then after the credit scene happened, and then boom, a few movie trailers happened for some other movies and animes. And then boom, gone, the movie was over. So, yeah. That is One Piece Stampede, the movie. I mean, that is One Piece Strong World, the movie. That is it. Thank you. Like, share, subscribe. Thank you all for watching. Uh, I got a, I got a boy. My boy on YouTube, Hype Beast Morgan. He is my boy. But uh, I'm not doing no giveaway. He, he keeps doing this for fun. He thinks he's funny. I'm not doing any giveaway. I probably won't do any giveaways on this channel. I can't really force something like that. I am sorry, everybody, but there's no PS5 or Xbox One giveaway on this channel happening. Please, please do not listen to Hype Beast Morgan. He is doing this all on his own to be funny. Do not get mad at me. Hype, Jessica Lover, and Johnny, whatever, better be you. That better be you, because I don't know how I'm going to explain this to two people that I'm not doing the no I'm not doing a uh, thing so please like share subscribe I see everybody later thank you all for watching I'm sorry that my computer kept bugging and I hiccup through most of it next review is going to be my hero the two heroes that's probably gonna be tomorrow I'm gonna talk slower and I won't hiccup no more sorry I keep talking really fast and yeah thank you all for watching I do want to talk about that scene with Luffy one more time. I know. I, I think I get everything across. It was just the impact of how everybody got shook and how mad he was about Nami not trusting him to be Shiki, you know? And the fact that Sanji and Usopp, they jerked back. How, because they, I guess they never like 
besides Zoro, like, besides like the main crew, I guess Robin, Brooke, and Frankie, like them, they never really seen Luffy actually get mad. He's normally carefree and going. And the fact that he just went off, and how they know how powerful he is too. Now he just went off. They were just scared, like, oh my, whoa! Like, they were like, yo, whoa, who is this? Like, yo, what in the world? So yeah, like, share, subscribe. See you guys later.